Hey guys, this is Anthony back at the Gazelle Lab. Today we have the highly anticipated review of the iPhone 5. I just got my hands on this about a week ago and it's about time to give this thing a run through the lab. So let's start off with the overall design and the build quality of this device. It's fantastic build quality on the newest iPhone. Slimmer, lighter, sexier. It comes in two colors, black and white. Uh, this is, you have your, your new Nano uh, SIM port on the back you have your 8 megapixel camera, your LED flash, this nice aluminum back. Uh, on the other side, same same as previous iPhones, volume up and down, and uh, you know the silent mute. And then front you have the 4 inch screen, uh, 640 by 1136 pixels, 326 ppi, you still get that retina display, very nice. Uh, you know, all previous models were 3.5 inch, so this is a you know the big step for the for the iPhone in competing with other bigger uh, bigger screen devices. Uh, on top, you know, power button, uh, lock screen button, and then on the bottom, the first time you have the headphone jack port on the bottom, and then uh, your new nine pin connector. So you don't have the classic thirty pin connector. This is the called the lightning connector. Uh, other than that, it's quad band GSM, quad band three G support. Uh, there is three different models: a CDMA model, which is A fourteen twenty nine for pretty much for Sprint, Verizon, and some Asian carriers, and then you have. A1429 and GSM model with LTE for uh, pretty much like the world version. This is this is the AT&T version, which is A1428, I believe, which will give you LTE in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, you know, Gorilla Glass uh, display, very very good in drop test. If you YouTube some uh, drop tests, this thing's holding up since it's so light. It's only 112 uh, grams, 123 millimeters by 58 wide, and only seven. 7.6 millimeters thin, which is you know amazing, very very nice. Uh, one thing I notice is you know it does feel a little bit, it feels good in the hand, but since it's a little bit taller and still remains fairly thin, sometimes you know it does feel a little bit you know a little maybe perhaps not top heavy, but you know just not as not as solid as as the uh, previous iPhone 4 and iPhone 4 s which is all back a little bit heavier. I kind personally I kind of like the build quality of the 4s. Just the, the weight a little bit better. It feels a little bit more solid. This thing's almost. Some people say it's a little, you know, maybe perhaps too light. But other than that, it is extremely, uh, extremely sexy and thin. Uh, you know, it's a 16 million cut LED backlit IPS TFT capacitive touchscreen, which is very nice. Produces great colors. You get a real natural, uh, you know, natural coloration on when you're using the camera, and when you're, you know, viewing the web and pictures. iOS 6 with iCloud inter integration. Uh, Let's get into this 8 megapixel camera real quick. I'll take a little little snapshot for you. It does also feature, I'll show you one option right here, the new panoramic. It will work, you know, when the when the phone's held vertically like this, you can sweep around and it'll take a nice uh, panorama picture. Uh, on most Android phones it's done, you know, in horizontal mode, but let's get into a picture real quick. One thing I noticed about this camera is it performs extremely well in low light, especially compared to other devices such as uh, compared against the 1S, HTC 1S, Galaxy S3. Uh, so you do you do get some great uh, great picture quality on this thing. Let's take another one a little bit higher up. So you do have some very nice picture quality in here, which is nice. Uh, so amazing camera, you know, pretty much maybe on par a little bit better than the uh, than the 4S due to this new A6 chip, which we'll talk about right now. So you do have this the newest uh, dual core processor uh, from Apple. Uh, it's an A6 uh, 1.2 uh, dual core custom design CPU, and then you have you know you have this amazing GPU on it as well, which handles it's a triple core graphics GPU. It's Power VR SGX 543 MP3, which you know doesn't mean a lot to normal people, but Take my word for it. Gaming is very nice on there. I just had the newest version of FIFA, and the thing looks very nice. Game is really nice. One thing is, coming from an older iPhone, 3.5 inch to 4 inch, you know, game is a lot better. Uh, I'm a Galaxy S3 user, so it's still a little small for me, you know. But uh, from a previous iPhone, it's fantastic. Uh, like I said, it do has new Nano SIM card support, so. If you're upgrading, you will need a new SIM card. It supports HD voice, which is cool, but a lot of the U.S. carriers do not support uh, this feature yet. So, you know, we'll see 
you know, in the coming future, how that uh, how that pans out. It comes with this new nice set of earbuds, which I don't have on me right now, which are very nice. Uh, and they go in this, you know, the standard 3.5 jack down here. Uh, Bluetooth 4.0 on board. And one thing that a lot of people aren't happy about are these Apple Maps. So, you know, I've I've been using them a little. They're not as you know, not as good as uh, as Google Maps, which I lost. So, you know, so that's one thing that, you know, a little bit disappointing on this phone is uh, the mapping feature. You know, if you're heavily tied into Google Maps and you're on an older iPhone, perhaps don't upgrade to iOS 6 and uh, stay with Google Maps. But I'm sure it will definitely get uh, better over time. Uh, you know, and that's pretty much it. You know, it's, it's a fantastic device, but the real question is, should you, should you upgrade to it? You know, I think... If you're coming from an iPhone 4 or anything older than that, 100%. You know, definitely upgrade is definitely worth the upgrade. You know, series on this too, so you're gonna have all the same features that are in the 4S, which you never had on your 4 or 3GS or whatever else you're on. Uh, but coming from a 4S, and you know, you have the two-year eligibility upgrade price, you know, for 199, and you're heavily, you know, already invested into a lot of iOS apps and iTunes. You know, definitely get it. it's a smart move. Uh, but if you're on, let's say if you're on a 4S, you just got it, it's going to be another $550 to upgrade. Perhaps maybe it's, you know, best to hold out and wait till next year's model comes out. Who knows if they're going to, you know, do a design overall change again, something a little bit, you know, a little bit more revolutionary. And then uh, a slight, this is like, I consider this a slight upgrade to the, to the 4 or the 4S because, you know, the design's almost the same. When it jumped from 3 you know, from the from the 3GS to the 4, that was amazing because everyone saw this new body and this new style. But with the 5, you know, you're just getting, you're pretty much getting a better 4S. So perhaps if you're on a 4S, you could wait, hold out. Uh, coming, being an Android user, I don't know, I don't see this as a great upgrade. Uh, especially with all the new phones coming out, you have, you know, the Galaxy, the Note 2 coming out, you're going to have the brand new Nexus phones coming out, a Nexus 5, or an Optimus Nexus, or Xperia Nexus, all these, uh, all these rumored Nexus phones coming out that will run the, you know, 4.2 version of Android, so I'm not sure if it's a smart move there, but definitely if you're, if you're an Apple user, this is definitely the best iPhone to date, you know, super slim, super light, and super fast. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my review, thanks.